One line of tech tips video, two keyboards. Is it a showdown? No, it's actually not. But I'm going to highlight what these keyboards do differently from each other and what they do differently from the rest of the keyboards on the market. Treat that like button down there like the big red button that you see in a movie or video game and press it if you'd like to see a video on the R9 390X. FreshBooks is the super simple invoicing solution that lets you get organized, save time, and get paid faster. Click now to try it for free. Let's start with the strafe from Corsair. First off, I need to check out these two videos from Linus if you haven't seen them yet. There are his reviews on the Corsair K70 and the Corsair K70 RGB. They're very important com for comparative reasons because the K70 is currently $110 on Newegg.com and the MSRP of the strafe is also $110. That price could change, but they're the same for now. The K70 and the Strafe both have Cherry MX switches. They both have USB pass-throughs. They both have textured and contoured keycaps for a few certain keys, although they're different ones. The Strafe leans more towards MOBA. Uh, they both have 100% anti-ghosting technology, and they both have enhanced easy access multimedia controls. So what's different? The K70 has a wrist rest. The K70's multimedia controls are amazing. The volume control has a wonderful metal scroll wheel that feels great to operate. And most of the controls have their own dedicated button for easy access. The strafe is mostly based around a function key outside of just brightness and a lock button. The K70 has an amazing aluminum construction and it looks great. It adds a lot to the structural rigidity of the keyboard and the strafe does not have that. It's mostly plastic construction. But is it all bad news? No, not at all. The Strafe has some really cool stuff. The K70 doesn't have the hardware inside it in order to work with Q software, which enables users to program each key with automated macros. This comes from the K70 RGB, but that has a huge price increase. The other thing that it inherits from the RGB is an enhanced lighting controller. Lighting modes on the K70 were maybe a bit rather boring, but the Strafe has six unique lighting effects built in and the ability for the user to craft their own. This also includes downloading lighting themes off the CorsairGaming.com website, and it's not just a better lighting controller. Behind your keys is a red backplate which will enhance the quality of your background lighting effects. Pretty cool. Moving on, we have the MX Board 6.0 from Cherry. This is a fairly standard looking keyboard. The beautiful aluminum housing is coated so your oily hands won't ruin it, which is great. And the awesome magnetic wrist rest clicks in very easily, is a great size, and feels very comfy. But outside of those things and some slightly shorter than normal keycaps, it looks fairly standard at first. One technology that Cherry put into this board, and as of this point, doesn't really seem too interested into giving to other people is their RK technology, also known as RealKey. The goal of RealKey is reducing the lag within the keyboard from about 20 milliseconds for a key press to one millisecond, and a mechanical version of switch debouncing. All of this is compared to the standard matrix scanning method. What the hell am I talking about? Well, every time that you press a key, your keyboard has to figure out that you pressed it and which one it was. The matrix scanning method checks all the pins on your board with a specific current and then directs all of that using a bunch of diodes back to the controller, which then takes the X and Y axis and then it can figure out which one you pressed. Real key technology doesn't use diodes and connects everything together directly to the controller, but this time a unique voltage is sent to each pin and the controller will use the final total voltage to determine which switch was pressed down. This, in theory, is a huge improvement. And I think it's super cool, don't get me wrong, but I didn't personally really notice a difference. I would like to do more testing here, but that would require more scientific equipment than I currently have my hands on, so maybe we can look into that in the future. But it's not a huge, very drastically noticeable change. In conclusion, the keyboard battle is ever expanding and two new strong players have entered the game. They're both on the Cherry team, but they have their own unique offerings. One with fantastic lighting control, and the other is faster than ever. Which do you choose?
Mastrop has another one of their pretty killer deals going on today. The Sennheiser Urbanite XLs are currently available over there at a whopping $105 off the MSRP. These do have a more bass focus frequency response, so they're a bit of a new generation sound meets storied Sennheiser engineering type of product. Of course, this product is available only through Mastrop at this significantly discounted price, thanks to their group buy model. Especially, uh, essentially, the more people that buy, the more the price goes down to a set minimum, with its minimum price being just under 30% below the MSRP for this product. You can check out this drop and many more in the link in the description, dro.ps slash Linus Tech Tips. So head over there now if you're interested. That link doesn't give us any kickback or anything, but it does let them know that we sent you. Thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do at this point. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly using our Amazon affiliate code to shop at, well, Amazon. Buying a cool t-shirt that is not this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through the community forum, which is hopefully getting an upgrade soon. Now that you're done all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click the little like button in the top right hand corner to check out the best tech showrooms in the freaking world.